Welcome to the September Transmart Foundation monthly community call. As with all community meetings, uh, this, this call is recorded and will be made available for offline viewing via the Transmart Foundation website. For September, we'll do a brief set of foundation updates. Uh, Terry will give us an update on the platform and the progress towards a version 1.2.5 release. Rudy will give us an update on the annual meeting uh, that will occur in October in Amsterdam, hosted by CTMM Trait. And this month, uh, BT Global will make a presentation on services that they are making available with Oracle on Transmart. At the end of that presentation, we'll open up the call for questions and answers. Keith uh, Elliston is not able to join us today, so I'll do a, a, a brief set of, of updates uh, on foundation activities. Uh, this slide, the key strategic issue slide, is, is a slide that Keith presented last month. And again, we'll just go through it briefly just so that everybody continues to be aware of what the priorities are from a foundation perspective. And so that begins with uh, development of the version 1.3 code base. And as many uh, uh, of you are aware, um, we are uh, working on um, requirements for development and resourcing and, and are looking um, to, to deliver a version 1.3 in um, calendar year 2016 and when Terry talks about uh, platform updates he can uh, uh, revisit the timeline for everybody. The foundation continues to uh, work with uh, the community on the concept of developing a commercial quality uh, version 2 uh, code base. Um, as we have talked many times before, it is essential, essential that the architecture is scalable and, and, and takes a plug-in modular approach and that the core of, of version 2.0 be of commercial quality. And so as more specific information becomes available, we will be sharing that through this venue and through other communication channels uh, of, of the foundation. Uh, the the uh, leadership, the management team of the foundation is continuing to look at other open source projects that would be synergistic to uh, the Transmart platform and exploring how we can bring those projects in under the foundation to the benefit um, of, of everyone. And then uh, um, Keith continues to uh, work on developing out the, the legal framework that will deal with um, intellectual property issues, copyright issues, license issues, and so forth that everyone is well familiar with. So moving on, I'd like to turn uh, the call over to Terry to give us an update on uh, the platform. Terry? Yeah, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Okay, um, the, well, so this is the timeline that we presented a couple calls ago, um, and it roughly is still holding true, although we're a little bit behind on the uh, 1.2.5 release. Um, and as you probably know, the, we're starting the 1.2.5 release uh, today. Uh, by implementing code freeze. Um, I'm in the middle of uh, working with folks to get the last pull requests into the code um, right now. Um, and then uh, we have for 1.2.5, we have a plan to um, uh, provide support releases at six months intervals for whatever is decided to be the life of 1.2. As you know, there's also a plan to bring 1.3 up. Uh, as Kevin mentioned, um, we have we're working on the final version of requirements, and 
uh, the decision about implementing and implementors. Um, and that is moving forward, I believe. I don't have very much of a hand in that, but um, uh, the target is to begin um, uh, coding on that fairly soon with an end of year um, uh, beta version available I, for testing. The goal uh, is for a first quarter release of a version of 1.3. We'll see how that goes. Next slide. Um, we have a uh, Google Doc that is an evolving document on our um, 1.2 release process. Um, if people were interested in commenting on that, um, uh, let us know. We'll get you the link. I think the link has been sent out a couple of times. Um, it's intended for for a wide audience, but primarily within the Transmart Foundation. Um, it's a document that we in, intend to keep revising as we go, um, and the goal is to uh, the goals are to create a consisted and coordinated set of artifacts, the WAR files, the scripts for building and populating the database, scripts for installing tools and support, that kind of thing. Um, next slide. That process begins today, as I said. Um, we'll do a code freeze. There is a new GitHub site called Transmart Foundation, as you see here. That will be a limited a limited set of committers, and it will hold the stable versions of the code um, here on out. Um, in the end of the um, release process will be a set of code on that site, uh, which can be downloaded to get the um, current version, uh, 1.2.5. The timeline uh, is more precise nearby and gets somewhat vaguer as we go on, but um, we plan to have a deploy, uh, a testable version of the code and data deployed by the 18th. That will then be reviewed by the um, uh, product review committee, um, and their comments will be incorporated into fixes on that. We anticipate that there will be a couple of rounds of that cycle. Um, our target date for final approval is October 30. Once that once final approval is given, uh, we'll build a set of release artifacts starting. Uh, after that date, and with a goal of completing in it within a couple weeks, and along with that, we'll build and publish uh, Transmart War, uh, capture and publish ETL scripts, and the and the data, build and publish Docker files, a Docker image, uh, get the documentation into shape, and announce the release um, at the end of that process. Then we are planning, as I said, for downstream support releases at six-month intervals, 1.2.6, et cetera, uh, for the life of 1.2. As 1.3 comes online and gets debugged, gets exposed, gets turned out to the user community, um, we uh, plan to keep maintaining 1.2. Next slide. 1.3. Uh, this, uh, you saw this at the last call also, is a set of the features and uh, current sponsors. Um, this, as I said, is evolving um, and is pretty much near its final form. I think there's another slide on this as well. If you have any questions about this, contact Keith uh, Elliston. He can put you in touch with uh, the people who are doing it. Right. Done. Thank you, Terry. 
So, Rudy, if you'd be so kind, we'd uh, love for you to provide our audience today with updates on the uh, annual meeting October 19 through 21 in Amsterdam. Okay, thanks, Kevin. Uh, next slide. So uh, hopefully, as everyone knows, the annual meeting will take place October 19th to the 21st in Amsterdam, beautiful Amsterdam. Uh, I understand it may be a little chillier than it has been and a little rainier, but um, I'm sure we'll have a great time. Um, next, um, we do have four keynotes lined up uh, to speak uh, at the session. Uh, Emil Vost from the uh, Netherlands Cancer Institute will present on precision medicine targeted cancer therapies. Uh, a former colleague of mine, Martin Hoffman Apetis will, uh, from Frauheiber Institute, uh, will speak on integrating uh, integration of computable disease models in Transmart Plus knowledge bases. Uh, Paul Aviak will be our dinner speaker and give us, uh, I'm sure, another one of his exciting uh, talks on the future trends in translational medicine. And uh, on the last day, Boss Bloom from uh, Redbird University will talk on the Parkinson care of the future uh, and wearable sensors. Um, we do have over 20 technical and scientific presentations have that have been um, submitted. Uh, and um, we are in the process of laying these out into our full agenda. And uh, over uh, 10 posters have been submitted, although we have room for quite a few more. So if you have posters, um, you might want to think about that. Uh, of course, we will also have a hackathon uh, going during the meeting, as well as uh, a review of the data thought that took place earlier this year. Uh, finally, there will be our three C committees will meet uh, and uh, present some of their activities. The working groups will have a session, and then we'll hear from the um, from the, the co chairs. We will have an awards ceremony the first night, a conference dinner the second night, uh, and we we'll also be announcing shortly a training on the on the the following day, October twenty second. Um, on some advanced topics uh, in using the Transmart platform. And also on that day, the Thursday that week, Etrix will have their community meeting um, close by in Amsterdam. Next slide. I um, want to uh, mention that we do have sponsors who have uh, come on board for us uh, and are helping to support the meeting. Um, Rancho Biosciences has uh, stepped up and is going to be a platinum sponsor. We have three gold sponsors, Thompson Reuters, Dexter, and The Hive. And uh, Converge Health by Deloitte is our dinner sponsor. Uh, we do have room for more sponsorships, and if you're interested, please uh, let me know. Uh, we'd like to get those settled um, shortly. Next slide. Finally, um, we have um, uh, our, our uh, submissions for papers, for actual presentations is closed, but we can still take a number of more posters, so see the website, and please feel free to contact us. Uh, sponsors, if you're interested, please let us know. Uh, we're keeping up to date all the information on the uh, our website. Uh, you can register at uh, Transmart uh, Eventbrite, uh, and also we will have a full lanyard site with the entire agenda. Hopefully, the first version of this uh, by the end of this week. Uh, one quick note: uh, we do have a hotel lined up with some uh, discounted rooms, and those are still available. So please um, check the website and, and uh, do book your rooms. Uh, there are also a number of other hotels listed on the website. Uh, thanks for the local organizing uh, group who really put together uh, this all for us. We right now have 55 people registered. Uh, we are hoping to get up to 150 people. Uh, so uh, if you are thinking of coming and planning to come, please uh, start making your arrangements and uh, register now. And uh, we will have the full agenda uh, out uh, by the end of this week. That's it. Thank you. Uh, any questions, well, we can talk at the end. Thank you, Rudy. So now I'd like to uh, turn uh, the call and the presentation over to Peter Shaw with BT Global, who will talk about some of the, the work and services that they've been putting together around Transmart. Peter? Peter Shaw, are you there? I am, but I was talking to myself. Uh, <laughs> can you hear me? We can. Good. <laughs> okay, thanks, Kevin. Um, thanks for this opportunity to um, talk to you today. Um, my name is Peter Shaw. I'm a member of, um, of BT's Connected Science Team, um, which is within uh, BT Global Services. And I'd like to take about 15 minutes or so to discuss um, oracle flavors of Transmart. 
and uh, this is not meant to be me just talking to the community. Hopefully, it will start a conversation, and um, after you've digested the material, you know, I'd welcome feedback and comments. Um, I'll give you my email address, so uh, so be able to, you'll be able to contact me online. Um, on, on the slide that's showing at the moment, uh, this is just a quick intro to the BT Connected Science Platform, and I don't want to go into this too deeply because um, hopefully I'll be talking more about this at, um, at the upcoming annual meeting. But basically, the reason we built the Connected Science Platform is to make science easier for the scientist um, and to take away some of the complexities of building uh, some fairly powerful IT environments. Um, the Connected Science Platform is hosted on uh, a cloud platform. It's currently running on BT Cloud Compute, um, but we are making it um, platform agnostic, so it will be available on third-party cloud platforms as well. Um, we'll be announcing some things around that um, shortly. Um, what the Connected Science Platform does is to bring together uh, infrastructure as a service, which is cloud-based, um, key applications that scientists use, and also data uh, in the form of, for example, health data sets. The diagram on the right tries to represent this. Um, I think the key point I'd like to make, though, is that um, none of this would work without partners. And uh, some of the software that's provided is very specialized. It's not produced by BT. It's produced by companies such as Biovia or Asperisoft. And uh, what we've tried to do is include um, you know, the key software uh, tools and packages that researchers are, are familiar with. But one of our key partners is, is the Transmart Foundation. And um, so I'd like to move on to the next slide now, please, uh, just to talk about um, managed Transmart smart plans. Next slide, please, Kevin. Oh, sorry, first of all, um, and uh, this is a, a service that's globally available. Um, Connected Science has been launched in 12 countries around the world, so we've focused on the key drug development hubs, if you like, in the US, um, smattering across Europe, India, Singapore, Hong Kong and China, and Japan. Um, so the service is available from any of those countries, um, uh, but it can be used as a global platform as well. Uh, next slide, please, Kevin. So, Transmart platform. Um, the reason that we're keen to engage with the foundation is that we see Transmart as an important application uh, in, in, in the research cycle. Um, the BT Connected Science team has already launched, as well as our Workbench platform, we've launched a fully managed Transmart service. Um, so this provides an easy-to-use, scalable platform, because it's cloud-based, um, for translational research, it's hosted on BT Cloud Compute currently, and it's available globally. But again, we'll, you know, we have ambitions to become platform agnostic, if you like. Um, I think you know, the, the idea of moving towards a managed uh, Transmart platform ties in well um, with the uh, ambitions of the foundation to improve the quality, manageability, and so on of, of the platform itself. Um, what we are looking for, I think, is um, some guidance from the community around uh, use cases uh, and the kind of types and amounts of data that the community wants to process using Transmart. What we've done initially in terms of the managed transport platform is to um, focus on using Postgres as a back end because this seems to be, at the moment, the database of choice. Um, we've, we've looked at the publicly visible use cases of Transmart, and some of them are, are on the community website, and I've listed a few there. And the kinds of data types, again, is pulled from the um, uh, community website. I'm also aware that there are lots of initiatives underway to optimize performance of the Transmart platform in terms of looking at um, database performance and the work done by Uranus Pandis uh, and the team at Imperial is just a good example of that. 
and there are also um, third party uh, organizations offering um, guidance, advice, performance and tuning services on Transmart and, and the underlying um, uh, database structures. Um, so what can we do in addition to this? Could we move on to the next slide please? So th this really was what I wanted to get to today. Um, we, we think that Transmart uh, with Oracle as a back end um, could be of value to the community. Um, BT is, um, is a major of Oracle in its own right. Um, uh, we have some significant deployments for own use uh, in running our organization and providing services to our customers. I mean, for example, um, we recently rolled out uh, Oracle HR worldwide for um, 88,000 employees. Um, so this, if you're familiar with this, this is a cloud-based cloud HR platform. Uh, so that, that's a major investment by, by BT. That's just one example of our kind of Oracle, uh, internal Oracle deployments. Of course, as, as we're all aware, the decision to use Oracle has uh, a number of technical and, uh, and commercial implications. Uh, we know, I mean, we spend an awful lot of money with Oracle. Um, uh, but it's not just about the money itself. It's also about uh, having uh, staff with the right skills. Um, there are license implications in terms of the use of Oracle. Um, and therefore, we need to think about, uh, if it's a cloud-based environment, we need to think about um, maybe private availability zones or even bare metal, uh, actually dedicating blades to, um, to, to actually run as the database servers. And if you're talking about significant volumes of data, then maybe uh, Oracle cluster is going to come into the equation. Um, none of this is rocket science to you guys. I'm sure that you're all aware of these issues. Um, but what we'd like to do as part of our ongoing developments of our managed Transmart service um, is to provide Oracle as um, as a database option. And um, we are currently testing Oracle on BT Cloud Compute. Um, uh, we've already got instances running and we're, we've loaded data in there. We're now doing scalability tests. We don't think there are any technical issues to deploying this at size. Um, the initiative has been approved um, by Oracle themselves. Um, so they're fully supportive of this uh, endeavor by BT. Uh, and they, they see the value in a managed Transmart Oracle service provided and managed by, uh, by BT. Um, if you need any further details on that, um, uh, my contact at Oracle is Ben Bulpit, and feel, feel free to drop him a note. Um, and testing and integration and, and kind of evolution of the service will continue to be a collaboration between BT and Oracle. So, that's me talking to you, and now the next slide really is questions for the community. Um, and I think the fundamental question is, I know that um, a lot of organizations build their own Transmart environments. Uh, so as a foundation, is a managed Transmart service of value now or in your future plans? And then building on top of that, I think, do you use or do you, will you want to use in future Oracle with Transmart? And this then talks to the, if you like, the, uh, the drivers for using Oracle. Uh, and it may be that uh, it's something you already use elsewhere in your organization, therefore you do have the expertise, so why not use it? Um, maybe it's um, a question of reliability or industrial industrialization of, of the database environment. Maybe it's because you need scalability or throughput uh, performance um, uh, at scale. Um, or maybe there are specific requirements that you have that can only be satisfied by uh, Oracle technologies. Now, th those might all be reasons for doing it, but then, of course, there is a cost implication. So is cost a barrier? Or are, are there certain use cases within the organization that that justify that uh, that expenditure. Um, we also don't have a real feel for the split between Oracle and Postgres uh, users within the community. 
Uh, so we'd welcome some feedback on that. And then finally, um, you know, are there any generic issues, drawbacks, hurdles with the database layer that we should consider? So that, that's really all I wanted to say today. Um, as I said at the earlier, at the annual meeting, we'll be talking more about what BT has already built and um, what we intend to build moving forward. Uh, but I re really wanted to use the opportunity today as a reality check to see whether we're on the right track with a manage, managed transmart service with an Oracle backend as an option. Um, so Kevin, um, back to you, that's, that's my last slide. So th cool. thank you very much for the opportunity today. Thank you, Peter. I'm, I'm sure we, we all um, appreciate uh, what uh, BT is investing around Transmart and, and building a, a managed service. And I think you raise a number of important questions and issues for all of us uh, that uh, uh, BT would appreciate feedback on. So uh, thank you again. Uh, if you have feedback for uh, Peter, uh, as you can see, please contact him at peter.shaw at uh, bt.com. So at this point, we'd like to um, open up uh, today's call to uh, questions uh, that you may have, comments that you might like to make. Um, I know that uh, Gil Oman um, has, has already posted a, a question in the chat window. Um, I'm Gil, I'm going to unmute you and give you an opportunity to articulate yourself, uh, your, your question. Gil? Okay, great. Thank you very much, and thank you for this well-organized call and all the preparation for the big meeting in Holland and Netherlands in October. Um, I wanted to raise, with regard to the BT presentation, uh, a comment and a question. The comment, of course, is that this is tremendous and excellent presentation and we greatly value uh, BT's strong ties with Transmart and your leadership specifically. Uh, I'm glad you highlighted the uh, publicly visible Transmart use cases and credits to Thompson Reuters Rancho Biosciences and Trade. My question is, do you have any feedback for us on how people use these cases? I also like the concept and development of your uh, managed Transmart service. And with regard to the cases, um, if Terry would be available after your response, I, I wonder if he could also tell us if the testers of the uh, 1.2.5 platform that's about to be put into aggressive testing schedule uh, access these cases for content in evaluating the advances in the platform. Thanks very much. Uh, those two separate questions, really, related to the use cases and content. Great. Thank you, Gil. Um, so, so I'll just comment. Uh, Keith Elliston, who's at a conference today, is able to, to come on. I'm, I'm sure that uh, Keith would, would also like to, to comment um, on, on Gil's uh, questions. But um, um, the three C committees, which are really the communities and, and, and the foundation members' way of really trying to drive the activities and coalesce the activities of the community, one, one of the focal areas and where we have working groups is around use cases. And so um, the, the use cases that uh, BT has highlighted today are obviously important, but also, you know, more generally, we want to understand uh, the, the broad use cases that um, um, our community as a whole um, see Transmart as a platform uh, really, really serving. So um, um, I think as we go forward and as part of the annual meeting in Amsterdam on the 20th during the uh, 3C um, committee meetings, there will be, be an opportunity to talk more about use cases and making sure that everybody is aware across the community as a whole as to how Transmart is enabling science. Keith, uh, any, any comments further that you'd like to make around use cases? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, first off, uh, I just wanted to, to, to thank Peter for the, that great presentation. I think one of the key things that we've looked for uh, in our community is a way to extend Transmart to, you know, to really help impact uh, uh, 
you know, more, more in, end users, particularly in the areas of the academics and nonprofits, groups that may not have uh, the IT infrastructure to support a full transmart implementation. Uh, this is a, a for us uh, work challenges, uh, but I, I think this is great, a great. And I thank BT for being on the forefront of that. I work to more services along these lines. Uh, secondly, in terms of use cases, I think the use cases are incredibly important to what we're doing. Uh, the community committee has this as a working group, and uh, I think it's one of the more active working groups that we have. Uh, been a tremendous effort, and I think we need to all work together to make sure that we have the appropriate use cases um, generated, particularly as we're doing the 1.3 development. Uh, the 1.3 development process is, is one that's moving forward. It's moving forward um, a bit. Uh, uh, methodically uh, at this point. Uh, we're looking to pick up the pace and get more people engaged and involved, um, but I think it's a very important element to add features and capabilities and having the right use cases for this is important. So uh, I want to add a little bit to, to what you said, Kevin, as well. Um, the annual meeting um, is a great time for people to come together. Um, we're actually ahead of registrations uh, than we were for last year and the year before, so we're pretty encouraged. Uh, we tend to be a last-minute community. Um, this is a great opportunity for people to get together, uh, to see each other face to face. The community has grown quite a bit in the last 12 months, and there are a lot of new faces uh, around the table. So it's going to be a great opportunity to meet new people, uh, to get involved in the various projects, and to talk about some exciting things for the foundation. The foundation looking at growing and, and expanding by adding additional projects and refining our legal infrastructure and some other aspects to really solidify our open source community. So I encourage people to get involved there. Uh, and again, as, as Kevin said about the 3C committees, yeah. uh, these committees are, are the heart and blood of how we get things done uh, on, a, on a tactical basis. Uh, it's very important for people to get engaged there in that management piece. Uh, we have a number of things coming. Uh, I've heard now from the, the content committee in terms of key areas to make investments and move things forward. We've been doing some great things in the, uh, in the community committee with our datathons and hackathons. And we're going to hear a lot about the, the datathon and uh, the outcomes from that, uh, which I've gotten fantastic feedback from uh, at the annual meeting. And then the code committee obviously being involved in the 1.3 development and the version 2 development and, and architecture, uh, key and important projects for moving forward. So uh, I'm really encouraging everyone to, to come out to Amsterdam. It's a great uh, opportunity to get together and, and be a part of, of moving these key initiatives forward for the community. Thank you, Keith. Uh, Julie, you had uh, posted a couple of comments in, in the question window, and, and so I've unmuted you so you could speak directly uh, to the comments that you've made. Okay, thanks, Kevin. So I, I'd like to echo what Kevin said and thank um, BT for being there for us, providing us with servers um, when we need them for um, annual trainings and online trainings, um, and they've always been there to help support and that. So. Um, we really, really appreciate it. And then just one com um, comment about the question. So um, I don't know about others on the phone, but for Rancho Biosciences, um, all of our customers are on the Oracle version of Transmart. Um, and we had a couple that were on Postgres, but they've all now moved to Oracle. Well, thanks, Julian. That's, that's very interesting. But thanks for your kind comments. Excellent. Um, so, uh, any, any other questions uh, or comments from, from the community? If so, please raise your hand so we can unmute you and, and give an opportunity for, for you to contribute to, the, to today's call. Okay, I, I don't see any, any other hands being raised. Again, uh, I'd like to thank uh, Peter Shaw from BT on their presentation as they work with Oracle to put a, a managed Transmart service in place that members of the community um, could take advantage of if it makes business sense for your particular organization. Um, as, as Peter indicated, uh, BT would love feedback on, on their direction in terms of the connected services that they are developing out and certainly providing feedback to them will help them put together a service that, that meets uh, the needs of, of our scientific community. Um, 
Rudy provided a nice uh, sort of summary of um, the upcoming annual meeting. As Keith mentioned, uh, registrations are well underway. Uh, the planning committee is very active. It's meeting on a weekly basis. There's a lot of planning that is going on between these weekly calls. And what I'd really like to do is emphasize, if you're planning to go to Amsterdam, if you're planning to attend the annual meeting, and if you have not yet registered, please do so as soon as possible, because that will help those that are involved in, in uh, planning of the annual meeting to uh, work through the logistics so that it is successful as we have seen with, with past annual um, meetings. So again, thank you everybody for making uh, time today to participate in this monthly call. And uh, in lieu of an October um, community call, um, we will hold um, uh, the, the annual meeting again, October 19 through 21. And with as with past meetings, uh, we will be uh, video casting uh, those, uh, the, those sessions. So stay tuned and then we will hold our next uh, community call um, in November. Thanks again. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.